Norman, you have 15 minutes and we're all going to freeze minutes. and we're going to be eaten alive, okay? <laughs> Thank you. So there you go. This is so, it. How in the world can you ask Norman Bodek to get in front of an audience and only give him 15 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight's the night. <laughs> so I've shortened it to, to just two things that I think it's important in my journey, in this amazing journey of discovery. First, I have to thank George for introducing me to Paul. Mm. And Paul, you've been magic for me this last year. You don't know. Oh, no, you've been magic for me. Last September, I tried to put a study mission to Japan, and four people signed up. And all of a sudden, Paul decided we didn't do it. We postponed it till till March, and then and then Paul said, "I want to go." And all of a sudden, 22 people <laughs> follows him. <laughs> And he made my year, and I'm so and grateful. And it was the most fantastic trip to Japan I've ever been on. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So what can I give you tonight that's really valuable? Well, uh, Ron said, a manager's resistance to change. I, that, that's my claim to fame. There's seven ways came up with Ono, and I added two. One, one was the underutilization of people's talents. I call number eight. And number nine, manager's resistance to change. And in our trip to Japan, we discovered something I think so fabulous. We went to a company called Mirai. And Mirai has revolutionized the management concepts, really upside down. Here's a company, about 1,000 people. Uh, they've never lost money in 50 years. Never in one year have lost money in 50 years. They do everything totally different than anybody else. This year, they took all 1,000 people to Italy. All thousand employees went to Italy on vacation, paid for by the company. They do that once every five years. It's an amazing, but they have one thing that is so powerful, it's called no horenso. Horenso is a Japanese word meaning spinach. Mm, I love it. No, <laughs> no horenso. Every day, a ton of it I eat. Yes, and um, what's so unusual w with this no horenso I give a lecture. I, I, I'm not going to be doing many more of these anymore. I'm going to be 83 in a week, so that's pretty much my life has totally changed. I mean, I've gone through life looking for things to do. Now I'm going to be 83, and I have to look for things not to do. <laughs> it's a total, a total reverse. But this, this no, this no horror. So I would give a lecture, and in the lecture, I would introduce the Harada method. And everybody would get excited. They really love it. I mean, look what Paul has done with it. He took the Harada method, and now it's called Lean, <laughs> Lean, Lean PD. PD. And it's fabulous. He's really combined it, because Paul has to simplify everything. And he, he made this wonderful app. And so, um, <coughs> no horrendo means the following. I would give this lecture. People would love the Harada <laughs> method. I had 600 people, like, uh, uh, like George said, in, in the Canada. And they're all going to go back and do this. And what happens? They go to the boss and they said, we should do this Harada method. And the boss says, what? Well, you know, you don't have enough money in the budget. Um, maybe next year we'll do it. Um, and the brakes or the resistance is there to change. This is a natural phenomenon. I, be I don't know about you, but in the average company, when people want to do something new and they go to the boss for permission, 99% of the time it's no. No. Why do they send them to the conference? I don't understand <laughs> at all. Well, this company, Mirai, has revolutionized this concept because what they say is ho ren so. Ho means, and it's no, no ho ren so. So no, ho means consult. If you want to do something new, don't, don't ask for permission. I mean, don't, I mean, report. Don't, don't, don't report to your boss. Do it. Ren is means consult. Don't even consult. Just do it. And so means communicate. Don't talk to anybody else. You just do it. And the funny thing is about Mirai, every mistake you make, you'll get $6. Holy not a lot of money, but they'll give you $6 every time you make a mistake. Go through the definition one more time. I want to hear it. Go no ho renso. Yeah, do it again. Ho 
no, no ho rental. No, 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 no report. Don't do it. No, don't report. Don't report. Don't report. No, ren means don't consult. And so means don't communicate. You know your job better than anybody else. Why do you have to ask permission? I trust you. Now, this is an amazing phenomenon. And so far, only one person, which is Daniel's father, who went to Japan yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Michael? Charles. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he picked this up. He's their consultant. And he picked it up right away. Which, <laughs> which is he's going to take these concepts from this Mirai company and he's going to put it into his consulting practice. I thought that was great. And then a week ago, I'm reading Business Week. And the net result, Norman, is this company has e explosive creativity and... They have engagement. more patents. They probably have equal... They have a thousand people. Sony maybe has two hundred thousand. They have the same number of patents. Wow. Because the, the 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 president of the company said, "Whatever you do, don't copy anybody else. You must do something. You must differentiate. You must do something unique." Yes, if somebody's making a box, you can make a box. If they ever make a yellow box, you can't make a yellow box. Even if you can make money from it, don't do it. You can make it a green box, but not yellow. <laughs> It's such an amazing company to ask everybody to be self-reliant. Everybody to be self-reliant. I'm so blessed in my life. I was in Japan in November with Noriko. We went to see a very good friend of mine, and he was speaking at a conference. And while I was at the conference, an Indian gentleman comes over, and he introduces himself to me, and he says, uh, Norman, uh, I am Vino Srinivasan, and I'm the... I'm the president of TVS Motor in India. And I didn't even look up. I said, TVS was my first client in Japan 30 years ago. He says, I know, Norman, I was your client. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, you know, because then I looked up and reckon, within five minutes, five minutes, he invited Noriko and me to come to India, business class. Plus, he gave me a very nice fee. The only pro I had a great trip. The only problem with the trip was Paul wanted to come with me and he wouldn't let him. And I'm so sorry. Next time. <laughs> next time. There will be another next time. He's inviting me back in December. He's done another I'm thing. I'm open and available. <laughs> <laughs> He's done another thing which is just incredible. Uh, I went to India and he, he asked me to come and I said, what do you want me to teach? And he said, don't teach anything. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, just to look, just observe. I never did this before. Here's a $10 billion company, and he says, just, just observe. And I did. For two days, I observed his company. I think I helped a little bit. But then he sent me to a village. And what, what Vino did, India has over 300 million people living in poverty. 300 million people uh, making less than a dollar a day. And what he started is a foundation, a new program. I have to get him the Nobel Prize. That's one of my goals. What he's done is he went into these villages, and the village is complete poverty. Poverty means nothing. No bathrooms, no, no, no I mean, no, n n you know, I don't want to get too involved with that. <laughs> <laughs> but they have, their, houses, their houses are tense. They're not educated, especially the woman. Why educate a woman? What a waste. What's going on in the audience? <laughs> I mean, but, but what Reno did is he went in, he sent a group of people, a small group of people into a village to focus on self-reliance, completely self-reliance. And they go into a village and they get a woman and they would say, I want you to pick one skill, one skill that you could be successful at in life. And he'd look at the field and he'd look at this grass. Pull that grass and make a basket. Make a seat cover. Learn some trade. This is amazing what he's done in this village. This was 18 years ago when he transformed the first village, which I went out to see. He's now been into 2,900 villages. He's transformed the lives of over 1 million people. Wow. These people now have skills. Now they can make a living. And he's asked me, he's invited me back. Nariko and I are going back to, to India, I hope. He's asked me to write a book. Maybe you could all help me. He wants me to write a book about 
his work, he wants to make sort of a storybook so the world knows that the power of being self-reliant. You know the old idea is you could give people fish if they're hungry or you can teach them how to fish. And he's shown the way you could do this. Okay. Um, we're talking about lean and resistance to change. And I like this very much. This is, this is a story about Zappos. You know the company Zappos? Mm -hmm. Been there. You've been there. I've been there. And this is one of the first companies in America to apply this principle of no horenso. That means they don't want the people in the company to ask the boss for permission. I just found this in Business Week about a, a week ago, that it's starting to happen here. And I like this, that, uh, that Protzman, Charlie, is going to incorporate that into his practice. Now, I want to give you one more thing in this short period of time. Did I use my 15 minutes up already? You're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> okay. I'm in a new journey of discovery because I'm 83 years old, right? What happens when you reach 83? Tell us. Huh? Tell us. What? Yeah. Tell us. Tell, tell us. us. What happens when you reach 83? Not too much detail, but tell us. I only have a couple of years left is what it is. Yeah, not too much more. Only a couple of years left. I know exactly when I'm going, by the way. Who knows? Maybe I know exactly when I'm going. Know. It's okay. <laughs> knows. No, I'm, I know when I'm going, and it's fine, fine with me. But I know what I have to go through now to make the transition correctly. So maybe I'll share a little bit with that with you. Even though you're much younger with you, younger than me, you should prepare yourself for the transformation that might come, will come one day for you. But you don't have to wait for then. You can begin to apply right now. Let's see if we can do this. I'm studying a really great teacher right now, and he taught me the following, that I should focus on, well, let me explain this first to you, about the human mind. As I'm talking, or any time during the day, like this gentleman over here, what's your name? Thomas. Thomas. Now, I'm talking, and I'm saying very interesting things, and all of a sudden he stops thinking. <laughs> Did you notice it? Right away. This is the human mind. We're always thinking. Norman says Chicago, and all of a sudden everybody goes to Chicago. <laughs> That's just the way the human mind. Now, what is the human mind? What are these thoughts that we keep having? The thoughts that we keep having is the past. It is the past, but the only reality is right now. The only truth is right now. You want to solve problems, you solve problems right now. This mind is a very, I feel the human mind has not evolved yet. You know, we came from Neanderthals and we're progressing very slowly and we reach this age. The human mind hasn't developed as far as it should, even though we're, we're, we're out of space and etc. So what do we do with this mind that keeps, to me, I'm a little bit confused because I haven't done this before, but this human mind just is, is static. It's complete static. How do, I, how do I quiet this static? Well, this great teacher said the following to me. He said, I should focus on the changeless, I'm sorry you don't have a sheet of paper to write this down, but I should focus on the changeless witness, the changeless witness, which you are. You are the changeless witness. I want the changeless witness to focus on the changeful mind. Might sound kind of strange to you, and I'm sorry, but if you can think about this, I want this mind, I want this mind to start to be very quiet, and how am I going to do it? I want the thoughts, not really to stop, because I can't do that, but I want to be a witness to these thoughts. I, what do these thoughts happen now? I'm sorry I'm so confused. Watch the thoughts. The way it works is you get a thought. You don't like that particular thought, so you feel a little bit bad about it, right? You feel a little, you feel a little bit bad. You start to get a little bit emotional about that thought, and then all of a sudden you, you, you create an action. You start doing something in the negative sense. This is the human phenomenon. What I'm trying to do is I can't stop the thoughts, so I just want to watch them. I just want to watch them. I want to wa If I watch those thoughts, then they will quiet down and you could be much more lean. 
So let's try it tonight. Everybody sit up straight. Sit up straight. We'll take just a few minutes here. Sit up straight. <laughs> Put your hands down. I know it's a little cold. You should beat the fire. Just a few more seconds. Or sit up straight. Sit up straight. 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 Okay. Sit up straight. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Try to go deep, deep inside yourself. You might use your breath to do this, but try to go deep inside yourself. And what you're trying to do is to focus on this changeless witness that you are. You're not that crazy mind. You think you're the mind, but you're not. You're this changeless witness. And you just want to witness the changeful mind that keeps talking. You just want to watch it. That's all. Just want to watch it. Not react to it. Don't agree or disagree. Don't even really listen. But it'll talk so you can't help with it but hear it. But don't react to it. And then what will happen in your life? Whatever you need will come through you. Whatever you need will come through you spontaneously. Take a deep breath. And Paul, thank you so much for the Absolutely. gift of today. It's mm -hmm. wonderful thank for you, you to have me here. And I think, thank I think you so much. I think what I took away from what Norman was just saying, as, as unusual as it may have seemed, but the, the idea of removing the static from your mind a little bit, was that, was that part of what you were trying to get at? Because some yes. of us have so much going on. I just want you to realize that what's going on in your head is basically noise. Mm -hmm. The mind is there for us to use, but most of us are used by the mind. Right. The reverse happens, do you know? I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, and, and we want to be lean in this world. Well, how do you be lean? Be your for, own for, boss when you go to work. You, there you go. <laughs> number one. And number two is to go inside yourself and bring out the real strength in you. And don't listen to that crazy... I love it. I love it. Oh, you're okay. wonderful. Thank I love you, you so much. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, wow. Tonight was way better than.